Hi everyone, in this lecture we're going to talk about SQL Alchemy. Now, as a Python developer, you might think that I'm not really comfortable writing SQL commands in my Python code. I'm not really comfortable with SQL. And uh, I want to I want to come I want to know if is there a way that I can abstract away the SQL syntax and just convert it to a like a pure Pythonic code. And I'm here to tell you that yes, there is a way. And SQL Alchemy is here to help you achieve exactly that. So uh, SQL Alchemy is an ORM, it's an object relational mapping tool that is going to help us to work with databases, with relational databases in a more Pythonic way. So it is going to allow you to work with Python instead of SQL, instead of SQL to write uh, your queries and manipulate data in your databases. So uh, there is uh, there is going to be more than one library that implements ORM like functionality, but SQL Alchemy is the most famous one. It can work. It works with a lot of uh, web frameworks such as Flask, and it is perfectly compatible with SQLite, MySQL, and Postgres. So SQL SQL Alchemy is a large SQL uh, toolkit with lots of different components. The two largest components are SQL Alchemy Core and SQL Alchemy ORM. The difference between the two is SQL Alchemy Core uses a schema-based, uh, schema-centric view. Uh, and uh, just uh, schema-centric means that it is going to use uh, tables, keys, and SQL concepts, as opposed to SQL ORM, which uses an object-centric. And that is going to look uh, a lot like your normal Python code. So again, SQL Alchemy uh, basically abstracts away uh, many of the underlying database concepts. In the end, the job of this tool is to make querying data easier, faster, and more interesting for you as a Python developer. Here is the uh, PyPI page for SQL Alchemy. I'm going to, I think I've inserted, yeah, there we go. It hasn't been inserted here, so I'm just going to close that. You, you can work with it. You can read more about it there. I'm going to install, because it is a, a package, we need to install it. And I'm going to install it in a virtual environment. And we know how we can install something in a virtual environment. First off, we are going to say pip env install. Um, the, uh, we are going to install SQL Alchemy. If we just hit enter, it is just going to take a few seconds. So if we don't have a virtual environment first, it is going to create the virtual environment for us, successfully create it. Then it is going to install SQL Alchemy within that virtual environment. So a pip file and a pip lock file. And then we can import it very, very easily. So this is the, the location for our virtual environment. In case it is not shown in the interpreter list, Python interpreters list. So if I come here, you can see that we don't have, it says enter interpreter path. So I'm going to grab this, see this path. I'm going to insert it there and I'm going to hit enter. And down below bottom left, you're going to see that it is changed to that path. So we need to, you need to be within that virtual environment path uh, if you want to use the SQL Alchemy package because it has been installed in here. So let's select that. We can run this, uh, we can activate this virtual environment as well using pip env shell. There we go. Let's clear everything out and let's close this. We are good to go. So first off, let's import SQL Alchemy. And you could give it an alias. You could alias it as like Sal or like SQL L, whatever. I'm just going to use the SQL Alchemy name. I do not want to over confuse you. So we, first off, what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to create an engine and I'm going to pass in our database. The engine is different than the Python database API connection object. The engine allows our app to have multiple database connections and it manages those connections all by itself. So from the engine, we create a connection with which we can run database queries on. So I'm going to say SQL Alchemy dot create engine so these are the methods available to us by the sql alchemy now let's pass in our database the database is the sqlite database and we are going to pass in three forward slashes and then the name of the database so it is movie library 
So library.db, perfect. And I'm going to store this in an engine object, perfect. So uh, this is going to uh, connect to our database. We need a connection object as well. So I'm going to say engine dot connect perfect and i'm going to store this within the uh let me provide a space connection variable perfect so far so good now whenever you are working with sql alchemy you are bound to provide some metadata that metadata is going to include all the data about your tables columns the database itself the only thing that you need to do is just create a variable so it is going to be metadata and we are going to grab our sql alchemy okay where is that so we're going to grab our sql alchemy and we're going to say can uh oops uh there is another method that is metadata perfect now that we have metadata we can load um the database the database that we have this movie library database into our python application so to be able to do that is we are going to grab the sql alchemy and we are going to say dot table and i'm sure you're following now that whatever it is that we're writing is basically python basic python methods there is no sql command in here this is that that under the hood that's what's being implemented but as a Python developer, it has been, the complication has been ab abstracted. So the complication is mere abstraction. Perfect. So we are going to say we have a table movies. We are going to load our metadata. So metadata. Perfect. And there are two keyword arguments that we need to pass in here as well. So first one is auto load. We want our database to be auto load. So we are going to pass it as true. And then we need to pass it what is going to allow, what is going to help us load our database. That is the engine. So we are going to say auto load, auto load with, what is that? It is, let's pass in the engine. Perfect. Now, uh, we have done a lot of stuff. And the way that we can know for sure that they're working is we need to query our results. So what if you want to select are there records in, in the database? So selecting um, all the records in the DB. So how can you do that? Now, first off, I'm going to create a query object. The query object will set up the queries that will execute with the that we will execute with the connection object. So we are going to say query. And I'm going to say SQL Alchemy. Uh, SQL. Where is our SQL SQL Alchemy? Perfect. SQL Alchemy dot select. So within here, inside a list, we're going to pass in our movies object that we created before. So we have not created our movies object yet. Let's create that. So I'm just going to set it to movies. Now, this movies object is what we are going to pass into our query. So our query knows which database it is and which table it is that we want to query. So I'm going to uh, um, separate this lecture into two parts. The first part is going to be retrieving data. So I'm going to say retrieving data or records. Records. Perfect. So how can we retrieve the uh, records? Uh, what I'm going to do is we need to grab our query and we need to execute it. So we are going to say connection dot execute. Let's pass in the query that we have here. So whenever we pass that in, this is going to create something for us, which is called a result proxy. So I'm just going to name it result proxy, a result proxy proxies the cursor object uh, or the connection object in this case from the uh, python database api to grab us the result that we have and it is going to return an iterable so we can iterate over it to find our results so i'm going to create a variable and i'm going to call it uh, result set i'm going to grab the result proxy so result proxy and i'm going to say dot fetch all 
E T C H A double L F H O. Perfect. So now, if you now now we can, we are basically ready to execute our query. To we have executed it, but we do not see our results yet. So what if you want to retrieve all the records? I'm going to say all records, and we're going to say print result set. Just print the result set. That's it. So let's go into terminal. Auto pip eight. It is going to install it. Just just going to take a few seconds. All right. Come on, buddy. Installing successfully installed. Perfect. So let's clear the terminal. Now I'm going to say Python three dot sql alchemy dot py. Let's save that. Let's run it. It says cannot open desktops. SQL alchemy dot py no such file or directory. Oh three. I, I must spell the name. So it has to be three dot. Okay, let me just go there. Three dot SQL alchemy. So is it correct? Where is the S? So let's pass in the S as well. So it is three dot SQL alchemy dot py. Let's run it. It says no module named SQL alchemy. And it comes from line number eight. Line number eight. We do have that module. So let's save that. It is installed in here. So let's uh, let's um, I'm going to activate our environment first. Shell. There we go. Our environment was not activated. So you have to be like very careful that environment is activated. You have selected the right interpreter. So there is a lot of variables. So let's say three and there we go. So what we did was we did the same thing that we did in our previous lecture, but in a Pythonic way. This lecture is not over yet. We are going to do a lot of more things, but the important thing is, and I'm getting really, really excited, is that we basically abstracted away the SQL. We, we plucked it out and threw it away, and we basically were working with a Python code. So this implementation is Pythonic. This is what, what, what is called Pythonic, as opposed to what we had here, where we had SQL commands like this one, insert and like select inside our uh, Python application. So this is retrieving data. So this is going to retrieve for us all records. What if you want to retrieve only uh, like say the first record? I'm going to comment this one out and I'm going to say, not there. I'm going to say, give me the first record. Let's save that. Let's run the program. So it is going to give us avatar James Cameron. Uh, you can uh, select uh, the first two records as well. And we have already done that. So I'm just going to go ahead and do it. So I'm, I'm basically, I basically want to select the first two records. Let's save that. Let's run the code. So the first two records are James Cameron and Avengers Endgame. All right. So uh, it is, everything is working as expected. I would like to provide another comment in here and I'm going to just name it a uh, simple query. Uh, okay, so let me bring this down here. And now what if you want to filter results? How can you do that using uh, SQL Alchemy? Filtering results. So the way that you can filter results is uh, we are going to add the WHERE clause. But again, we are not working with SQL anymore. So there is no WHERE clause, but there is a WHERE um, method. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say query. I'm going to create another variable. And in case you think, okay, this is going to clash with this one, it is not because we are basically changing what this query is going to refer to in the memory. So in the memory, uh, this query for now, it refers to this object. But when we change it, whatever comes in here, the query is going to refer to the new object that we assign it to. So there is nothing to worry there. So I'm, I'm going to say select. You can see that this is select. So this select method is, I should not close this file, is equivalent to the select command that we have in SQL. See, it is a select method. This is cool. So we are going to pass in the movies object. And then we are going to say where, there we go. There is no where clause. There is no select clause. They're basically methods now. This is Pythonic. Very cool. Very, very cool. So we're going to say movies dot 
columns dot director equals let's say you want to grab all the movies that James Cameron has directed now you can see these dots I'm gonna zoom in a little bit more so let's clear the terminal let's close it as well you can see these dots this is the dot operator when have we used the dot operator the first time in our course I don't remember I'm sure you do remember and what does this say it means that these are objects because dot operator is used to find the attributes and the methods available for a certain object so dot operator is works only for objects so now you can see how this is being changed into a an object centric view rather than a schema centric you can see how it is being changed this is how it is work so in in the sequel what we did was we said okay uh, select where year is greater than that this is not Pythonic this is SQL command that we run but in here what we say dot where which is a method movies dot columns dot director equals James Cameron so this is in fact more Pythonic so let me zoom out I think this was the level I could zoom it in to here but there is a lot of code and I'm sure you can still read it we know that this is going to give us a pro a result proxy or a proxy object and we are gonna say connection what do we want to execute we want to execute the newly cr created query so we select the query sorry we create the query we execute it upon the connection object keep that in mind which we have created here when we connect it to the engine so there were two steps the engine connected to our database and then the connection object connected to the engine this connection object belongs to the Python database API this engine object it belongs to SQL alchemy you need to be able to differentiate be between these two you can see wherever you have SQL alchemy that is the SQL alchemy toolkit methods that are available so you can see all of these are available by to us by SQL alchemy the rest of them are Python database API that's it like a simple way of understanding which is which and we're gonna say result proxy dot fetch uh, fetch all and we're gonna grab our result set so let me just copy that put it here and comment it let's save that let's run this code so SQL alchemy there we go so how many movies are there where the James Cameron when James Cameron is the director we just have one movie for that so you could have added more movies but what we have added here is just one movie so we have basically retrieved that this is the first part of this lecture I'm gonna continue on and because these are getting really really interesting I'm going to comment out this so we don't have now the second part is going to be inserting records so you know how you can retrieve data I, even you know how you can filter it but what about ret, uh, inserting data in a Pythonic way how can you do that so let's go ahead and let's create our query first so now you know what how these are all working together we're gonna to say movies and instead of like saying insert into something values open parenthesis close parenthesis no we just say insert the method this is cool right so insert method and then we have our values which is yet another method so instead of having all these uh, where we had insert this is another method values is another method so this is abstraction of complication and um, let's pass in what it, what it is that you want to insert so we are going to say title is going to be equal to let's say the Lion King then we are gonna uh, separate it so it's a tuple we are gonna say director is going to be equal to John Favreau let me see it's spelled correctly Favreau John Favreau and then the year is going to be equal to 2019 remember it's an integer so it's going to be 2019 now this query is created we need to execute it as well so uh, connection dot execute query 
now that the query is executed, we have inserted our data. Now, keep in mind, when you run this, the next time that you run it, the second time, you need to comment this one up because it is going to create duplicate records. You need to keep that in mind as well. So let's find out if we have been able to insert records correctly into our database. We know that we don't have the Lion King. We just looked at it right here. So now let's see if we do have it. So we are going to say we are going to create a query and this is going to be we know SQL alchemy dot uh, select, which is like the select command, the select statement. We are going to pass in movies. Then it is going to give us a result proxy. And we're going to say connection dot execute. Execute this result proxy on the query and then result underscore set is going to be result proxy let's iterate over it fetch all let's close that and eventually let's print our result set result hopefully everything is working perfectly so let me clear this up let's run this and there we go so where is the lion king this is the last or the latest entry into this table so there we go. It, it, we have Lion King John Favre. So we have executed it. Let's comment this one out. Perfect. Now, um, what if um, I'm gonna I'm gonna give you like a couple of more examples. I know it's been twenty almost twenty three minutes, but I feel like I should give you a couple of more examples to know to how to use like the where clause better, right? So uh, where where did we, we used it here? where we filtered. So I'm just going to say filtering results. I'm going to give you a couple of more examples for filtering results. And the first one is going to be, let's say you want to grab all the movies which have come after year, in year 2015 or after that. We did the same thing in our previous lecture, right? So we are going to grab our query and we're going to say SQL Alchemy. Give me the select method which is the select statement, equivalent of select statement into SQL. And um, the reason that I'm emphasizing on this is that you see the brilliance behind the SQL alchemy, how much easier it is to work with SQL alchemy as opposed to like knowing an entire different language. So with SQL alchemy, you don't even have to know SQL. You just have to know what methods are available on SQL alchemy. Of course, don't get me wrong, it is good to know. SQL. You need to know it when you're working in backend. So we are going to say where movies dot columns. So from the columns, we are going to grab the year. You need to be very careful careful when you're writing the column name. They have come uh, after uh, at in 2015 or after that. And then we are basically grabbing all these three and executing those. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I'm going to save this. Let's run it. So we got Endgame, Star Wars, and Lion King after, in 2015 or after 2015. So this is the first example. I could move on. I'm going to give you one more, and that is for movies which have come before 2015. So I'm just going to copy this, bring it down here. So I'm going to say um, before 2015, and basically everything is going to everything else is going to stay the same all right so we have james Cam cameron avatar avengers 2012 chris buck 2013 frozen and i can i see right here that i've misspelled frozen and this is an oopsie so you could go ahead and just ignore this i'm sure you have as uh, spelled it correctly but i'm just going to keep it here Okay, that's it for this lecture. See you in the next one.